Welcome to the shooting show. This week we're in the Western Highlands with Gary Sharp on a stag double. Plus we hop over the Irish Sea with Jason Doyle on Fox Control. Today we're out with Gary Sharp after a stag on the historic Dalness estate. As Gary tries out the Merkel Helix on the firing range, Dalness keeper Martin ensures that the rifle is properly zeroed before loading up and heading out in the 4 before. The hill they'll be tackling today is called Stop Do. Gaelic for Black Hill, a likely site to engage a stag. So where we're going to go up the right hand side, I will go up the right hand side uh, and possibly angle round mm -hmm. the hill rather than going straight over the top. And will we be looking down this way or? Uh, we'll be looking out into the back of Glen Caitlin here. Right. Well, hopefully today we're going to get a good cool stag and just hopefully enjoy the day and see what we get, you know. We've had a lovely walk up the hill. The main concern today will be the uh, wind. We've got an easterly wind today and although at the moment it's in our favour, as soon as we go around the top of the hill up there we might have a few problems, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, we're sitting on top of uh, Stobdu, not far off the top of Stobdu in Glen Caitlin on Dalnice Estate. We've come to the hill today to see if we can get a good cull stag uh, for today. Um, we're quite selective about what we shoot on the estate, so we're basically looking for a, a good old mature stag um, to take out of the herd. But I am quite uh, happy with what decent stags we have. Um, there's a lot of younger stags about, noticed a lot of younger stags this year, um, but there's some good mature stags in about them too. Joined by Gilly Jonathan, the group set off to skirt the summit, glassing the slopes before pressing on as the wind increases in intensity. A group of hinds straight up from that onto the other face. You should be able to pick them out there. It's not long until Martin spies a puckle of hinds, but no stags as of yet. A group of hinds is just moving on. Martin investigates another corrie over the rise, which seems a much better prospect. I stagged in this corrie the other day, so... so we're just going to creep along, are we? Yeah, the winds are going down right into the corrie, I think that's why they're moving. So we'll just cut round here and uh, come in from the other side and have a look, you know. But they were only within 100 yards of me, I'd say. So we'll just nip round here and see if we can see anything, you know. round off the top and spied a couple of younger stags down in the quarry here. 
this is where the mature stags were the other day, so I thought they'd have been in the back here somewhere. Yeah, As we yeah. came down and had a closer look, there was an awful lot of hinds and just a couple of younger stags with the hinds. We had a stop just in case there was anything mature in below us, but as we got further down, managed to see the whole of the quarry and discovered there was nothing shootable in, in the group. So uh, next, we'll basically we'll uh, head on back round into Glen Caitlin. Uh, hopefully, we'll get a bit more of a steady wind, uh, and there's, I'm hoping there's stags. I think there should be stags just round the face for us. After a quick bite to eat, the group picks out the best route to Glen Caitlin and has start a slow, wary descent, keeping one eye on the slopes below for nervous hinds. If they startle a puckle now, any attendant stags won't stick around. Martin spies yet more hinds far below Stob do, but alas, there's no stag there for Gary. Afternoon is now turning to evening, and the light will be fading fast. Martin tirelessly classes the hill, as you never know when the perfect stag will appear. Unfortunately, the surrounding area remains quiet. The vista of Glenative on the walk back to the far before is remarkable. The steep climb is worth the view at the very least, despite missing out on a stag. And the forest below is the very ground Gary will be stalking the following evening. Day two on the deer, we decided to go in the forestry behind Glenetive. Um, went out in the morning, nothing seen. Uh, came back for lunch, decided to go out in the evening. Did you lose many over the wind? Came across a nice deer. Uh, it had hinds in front, so it was quite an awkward stalking. Oh! Shoot on the shoulder. Perfect. Where is he? Yeah. He's going down, is he? Managed to get to the deer, get the shot. Very happy. Yeah. Good, Gary. Well done, Gary. Cheers, thank you. Good shot. After spying another stag seen earlier in the evening, Gary and Glenative Keeper Mark stalk the second beast of the night. Stag. Uh, shot him about 160 yards, 170 yards, walking away. Sort of side on around the neck area. <laughs> Just to drop him because it's really rough and trees. Trees everywhere. Uh, well done, guy. Cheers, very nice. This is the Shooting Show News, brought to you by gunbedge.co.uk. All gun licensing in Scotland is impractical and will not improve public safety, according to representative bodies for police and lawyers in Scotland. The Law Society of Scotland says the proposed licensing scheme is impractical and will not reduce air gun crime. The Scottish Police Federation has similar concerns and said the police service would struggle to deal with the additional demand. Basque Scotland has questioned the public safety benefit from air gun licensing. The organisation also anticipates an increase in recorded offences compared with a 75% decrease over the past five years. The pilot badger culls have concluded for 2014 and there's already dispute over the effectiveness of the culls in the two pilot areas in Gloucestershire and Somerset. Figures still need to be independently audited but animal rights groups have claimed they fell short of the targets. But the NFU said the culls have been effective when they were allowed to go ahead without interruption. More on this story in the next issue of Sporting Rifle. Over the last 10 years, gun crime has reduced by more than half. That's the story told by the latest statistics, which show a 6% decrease in gun crime on last year. Gun crime is falling faster than the overall rate of crime reduction. The overall number of recorded offences has now dropped below 5,000. A new study has confirmed what stalkers already know about shooting deer ethically and effectively. 
Factors associated with shooting accuracy and wounding rate of managed wild deer species in the UK, published last week, recommend shooting from a supported position at a stationary and unobscured deer within 100 metres, and promotes heart and lung shots rather than aiming for the neck or head. It found that getting a recognised stalking qualification did make a difference to stalking success, as did regular practice. And finally, official guidance that offers new advice on how to handle shot game has emerged from Sweden. The Swedish National Food Agency recommended the removal of a bullet's wound channel, plus an additional 10 centimetres of meat. For small game shot with a shotgun, only meat visibly affected by the shot needs to be removed. If you want to see what the Swedes have to say, you can download an English translation from basque.org.uk. That was the Shooting Show News. Yeah, I'm fortunate enough to be a, a member of the local gun club in the, in the parish here. Uh, they release bars, the 30, 40 members to each club. Release a good number of pulse. We've eight to ten release pens with, with birds in them now at the moment. They're probably about 10, 12 weeks old. This is the first outing with the lamp now this year, as I'd call it, after the harvest. Still a good bit of stuff has to be cut, which will open up a lot more ground. Plus the hours are a bit more suitable that you can get out after working the like. So from here on in up until March, we'll be doing a good bit of lamping. But mm. in, for the next month or more now, we will be paying a lot of attention to what foxes we've seen in these areas. There is release pens in those areas now, and with Paul's going out and starting to spread out a bit, we're going to have to get in on top of them. We are not allowed to to hunt or to lamp or shoot from the vehicle over here. Totally different across the water, I believe, all right, and what I have seen on videos. But over here, it's a no-no. We can use our vehicles for transport up across, but we are not supposed, we are not allowed to either shoot or lamp from the vehicles. That's why I will get to an area where I want the lamp, park up, leave the vehicle, go out on foot, start lamping. Maybe some nights you might just walk a whole farm, two farms, without coming back to the vehicle. Other nights you will be just going to certain areas, one, two fields, you can get out, get in a bit further away, do your bit of calling, hopefully see a fox or whatever, get back in, and then go further on to the next spot that you know you want to hunt. The first fox we seen, um, that was down underneath a lane. There was a couple of foxes in that, there was three in that area there. There was an older one and there was two cubs that we could make out. Um, I missed the first one all right in fairness now, that was a boo-boo. Shouldn't have been. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe got a bit anxious to get one in. That was the older one, the one to get the two cubs underneath. Uh, number two, we got down. It was in very rushy, dirty ground, a lot of thistles. Hard to get a good view of it. A couple of times I had it, but wasn't happy with the shot. We walked down into it. It's not long before Stephen and Jason get to within shooting range. Now the only challenge is getting the camera on the fox too.
Finally, both rifle and camera are trained on the right location, but the shot's still not on. There's just a bit of a tizzling between us and it. I'm going to walk forward slightly, make up another five or six yards just to try to get a, a better angle of a clear shot on him. Or he is, I'm just not happy yet. It gave us a chance, and when we did, I took it fairly quick. That should be him. Keep that spot, Mark. It's very rushy down there. It's a very, very rushy spot, but it should be him. Happy at that now. Life is empty. If I go down, we'll have a look. See if we can find him. He is in motion there. By all accounts, the shot looked good, but we still need visual confirmation. Heading to the shot area, it's not long before we retrieve a fox carcass. Shot with gecko ammo, it went down on the spot. And that was a little cub vixen. That was a cub vixen, the first one. Done the job. Just a neck shot underneath the chin when she looked up. This year's vixen. Little cub. There is a pen just down in the corner. There were maybe 100 yards away. There were two other foxes here. No joy with them. We got this one tonight, now it'll help. There's another night to come back here yet. So we'll, uh, we'll cut our stick here and we'll have a look over in a couple of other spots where the stubble has come off, or the crop has come off, closer to other pens, we'll have a route around now and hopefully pick up a couple of foxes on that now, tonight. The first night I've started lamping back, just with so much cover around. Even where we're trying to find this, trying to get a shot, it wasn't exactly the easiest. We'll, I reckon now we, we, we should stand a fair good chance of getting a bit of better footage over on the over on the cook ground. Yeah. We'll go ahead and we'll try it anyway. Good. We'll get this lady out of the way. Uh, we went back up to the vehicle, went a bit further up the lane and got into higher ground, still rough ground. There was a fox out among cattle uh, up on a bank. Now what we wanted to do there was get in behind the cattle or away from it. Don't like firing over stock or in terrible close to stock. I hope we'll be able to get in across it now and get a decent look at it. There is stock in the fields so we're going to have to watch them as well. If they're in the way we'll just leave them. We'll get them another time. So hopefully he's down a bit lower than they are. We got how true them. They behave reasonable. For a bowl. They got a bit skittish. They started to move. The fox started to move away. There'll be no chance of a shot here, so we move on. Thankfully, once we get clear of the cattle, an opportunity presents itself once more. So, we, we did manage to get that one in the end. We got away from the livestock, they kept down below us. Fox moved up the bank. Wasn't going to stop for squeak, so I gave that a little whistle just to, to get Tom broadside. Managed to take the shot on it and worked well. Another little fix that time. She gave us a bit more of a chance to see her. All her lady as well. 
happy with that now. With two foxes on the ground, all that's left is to brave the gauntlet of the cows one more time before we make it to the vehicle. But Stephen reckons we can get one more fox before the night is out. Uh, we came back, we tried another bit of ground, same story, open pasture land. A uh, couple of foxes there, now we were actually driving up along lane, the first one looked out over the ditch and sort mm. of gave the game away for everybody else. Where he's gone back into, he's in a lot of trouble. Still, and the gate, yeah, we can get in. We got in over the fence, went down the field, started a call. <laughs> the first fox came up very well, thought it was going to come under our feet 20 30 yards away. It just disappeared back into thistles and moved back down the fence. While that was going on, we had two out to our left, which were totally wrong for the wind, and another one further out to our right. Might have came, but when we still had them on, we stuck with it. It ignored all calls after coming to the first one, but was quite happy enough to hunt around and smell. We just kept making up our ground, making up our ground. We did get down to it. We had a bit of a slight problem with the electric fence. The electric fence was just straight along the middle of the chest. I took a shot. Can't say I hit it. It it, it reacted very stupidly and came out and gave a nice handy enough shot on the on the second one. I was I, I was just very lucky to get that one in the end. But yeah. A dead fox is a dead fox, lucky or not, I'll take it. Just where he was, yeah. the strand of an electric fence. It sounded like asking him the first I think I might have just clipped it and, and caught him a little bit lower or something. Because it spun around, didn't know where it was going. It sounded like a hit fence. There was a little whip oh for God. a second. I thought that was going to come in for a thing. We did, we came there. So we went from there, we went up onto the stubbles, up on the higher ground. Hope you would have had a couple of fox on that, but we're just on forest. There was nothing there tonight, it got very, very windy. And at that we decided just to knock it on the head. It's getting on for 1am there now, and we're hoping to get out again in the morning, so. First night out, we got three. We didn't educate too many, that's that's the good thing. One one I did, unfortunately, but I'll catch up with that again. That, I have his address, <laughs> but, but there is a couple of more on the ground and I would like to see it this time of year, so for about the next month we will be fairly busy. Yeah. Any night, the weather permitting, chance can be got, we will be out. Mm. Just catch up with those now, hopefully. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, Looking after you.